when people get into blockchain, there's a natural discussion about what type of blockchain, because blockchain comes in many different types and flavors, and normally we hear about public versus private blockchains. Um, one factor that often gets left out is also the idea of an open versus closed blockchain, and it's important to consider both parameters so you know where on a possible solutions quadrant your idea falls. When we talk about public and private, what we're really talking about is who is able to write data onto that blockchain or onto that immutable ledger. Uh, the open versus closed um, brings into consideration who's able to read that data. And so we can talk about solutions which are public and open, public and closed, private and open, private and closed. Uh, but when we talk about public blockchains, what most folks are really talking about is a public open blockchain, is a blockchain where anybody can come write data to the blockchain, anybody else can come read that data. So public blockchain platforms like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin tend to get talked about a lot right now. And these are what we also refer to as permissionless blockchain platforms, meaning that they uh, really strive to, by design, increase and protect a user's anonymity. And if we don't know who a user is, if we don't have a way of identifying individuals, then we don't have any way of creating permission or access rules around that user. And so what we get is a system where anybody can commit data to that blockchain and anybody can come along and read data to that blockchain. Blockchain. So there's a perception that public blockchain platforms like Ethereum can't be used to build permission scenarios or to control access to data. Uh, the truth is they can, they just don't give you the built-in tools that a private or permission blockchain platform will. So you can always use these open public platforms to build a permission solution, but just understand that it's upon you, your architects, and your developers to create that permissioning model, and that all starts with some kind of identity management system. Um, so when you think of public blockchains, you think about blockchain platforms like Ethereum, understand that by default, by their very nature and design, uh, they are designed to protect anonymity. And if we don't know who a user is, then we really have no way of creating permissions, role-based access, and controlling what data they can read or write. And in a lot of situations, this is desirable. This is why we see cryptocurrencies based on public blockchain platforms because having that anonymity is important and if a user has a currency, something of value, uh, they should be able to exchange it and spend it and do what they want with it just like anybody else. We don't want to treat any class of users differently than any others in those scenarios. So that's a public blockchain and that's a very different animal from a private permission blockchain.